Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Lights and Buttons. Earlier today, I did pick up my very first Chromebook and that is the HP 14 inch Chromebook that you see over here. I did pick it up from Walmart as part of their Black Friday special. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. I purchased this with my own money. Walmart nor HP has any input to this video and any thoughts I expressed in this video are of my own. That being said, we're gonna do a little mini review on the Chromebook and my experience as a first time Chromebook owner. Um, basically, when I was shopping for a new device, I was looking for something that does uh, basic productivity work for the most part. Um, something that's simple, cheap, and but hopefully not the quality being cheap, but something that is uh, not really a tablet and then also something that's not a full out laptop. Before we continue, I do want to make a note that earlier this year in 2024, Google did announce that for their modern products, they'll be supporting the uh, security updates for a period of 10 years, which is pretty cool. Um, they also published a list of uh, Chromebook models and the uh, end of life support for their uh, security updates. Um, and unfortunately, for this particular model, which I'll put on the screen, I didn't find that specific model on that list. This might be a specific Black Friday thing, but I wanna make sure that this is not an older unopened box that's just floating around and trying to get rid of inventory. So we'll check that out in a little bit. Um, but besides that, we'll take a look at the screen, how that looks and some of the features and what this Chromebook has to offer. So let's get started. While there's certainly lots to talk about in regards to this Chromebook, we're only going to be able to touch on some of the specs. We're going to list the full specs here on the screen, but some of the things we can talk about won't be on the spec sheet because it does impact user experience, but it's kind of hard to describe, such as the quality of the screen, which I'll cover later on. Getting set up was pretty easy. The Chromebook turns right on when you plug in the USB-C power cord. To set up, just follow the prompts that are on your screen. So first, I connected to the Wi-Fi network. Next, I waited for the updates to install, which took about eight minutes. The screen will go blank and will continue to install the updates. And it was blank for about 49 seconds. Just let it do its thing. It seems like it's frozen, but it's not. And eventually the screen comes back. Next, I signed into my Google account. I signed in using my phone to authenticate via Bluetooth. Personally, I checked the checkbox to review what's synced to the Chromebook so that you know exactly what data is being used. Next, I set up the Chromebook password and you get an option to use a PIN. Next up, which is also optional, you can specify what you're using your Chromebook for. You'll be asked to install different apps and extra features. I did choose to skip most of that and I opted in for the dark theme. Now the setup is complete. The physical I.O. ports for this Chromebook is pretty minimal, but no surprises there given its small footprint. Over here on the left, we have a USB Type-C port that allows the laptop to be charged, which is great. And that's actually one of my personal requirements for purchasing a device like this because it gives you the ability to attach a USB-C hub if you wish to do so. Right next to that, we have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So for those of you who are using wired headsets, that's great news for you. Over here on the right, we have a single USB type A port, which obviously allows you to add more devices to the Chromebook over here. And also I wanna point out that if you choose to use a FIDO2 compliant multi-factor authentication for phishing resistance, such as a YubiKey, this gives you the option to use that device on this Chromebook because this, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't have NFC. So for FIDO2 MFA, you would have to resort back to using USB. If you're doing some research online, you'll see that a lot of the top rated Chromebooks range between $300 to $500. So does this Chromebook at $129 even stand a chance? As I mentioned before, we're just doing some basic productivity work, so we don't need a top-of-the-line Chromebook. 
One of the first things I checked was the security patching information under the OS details. This will show me how long this product will be supported until. Now something weird has happened because when I first got the Chromebook back in November of 2024, the end of the support date was listed as June of 2035, whereas now at the time of the recording, the date has changed to June of 2033. I'm not sure why that has happened. Although I can see the end of support date and year, I still don't know when this particular device was manufactured. This is not something I can find from walmart.com nor hp.com, but on the web, I did see someone talking about looking at the serial number. According to them, you have to look at the fourth, fifth, and sixth character, which will represent the single digit year, along with the week that this device was manufactured. So in my case, my Chromebook was manufactured in August of 2024. And now on to the tests. I'll go through this relatively quickly, so feel free to pause at any point. Starting with storage, you get a 128 gigabyte UFS storage, which is better than the typical 64 gigabyte EMMC storage that I see with other Chromebooks within this price range. You also have a little bit over 90 gigabytes of free space to work with because the operating system does take up some space to begin with. Next, with this screen, this is not a touch screen, although I wasn't really looking for one, so that's fine. The screen viewing angles wasn't really great, though it is sufficient for short-term work. If you're planning to use the Chromebook for an extended amount of time, after a bunch of hours, you might get a little bit of eye strain just because the color contrast isn't all that great. With the USB-C hub, I was able to have two external displays connected to the Chromebook, but you can have a total of three extended displays if you include the Chromebook's screen. When I first connected the Chromebook to my Anchor USB-C hub, there was a little bit of a glitch where only the power was recognized but none of the other accessories. I unplugged it and plugged it back in and things were fine after that. Because of the poor quality of the screen, I do recommend an external display if you're using this for a significant amount of time. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here and say compared to a laptop that is over 10 years old, this is my 2013 MacBook Pro that's next to the Chromebook, you can see that the MacBook Pro has a much nicer display even though it is much older. But yeah, I know we're not comparing apples to apples. Now let's talk about the speaker quality. The sound quality from the speaker is relatively poor in my opinion, but not unusable. This is similar to a mid-tier cell phone speaker, and I'll play a sample sound clip for you. Let's now do a speaker test. We have the volume set to 75% on this Chromebook. And tried it on my very first project, which is hang up a bunch of photos. One of the things that I had in mind was whether this was actually worth it or not. And we're going to talk about that more coming up next here on Lights and Buttons. This is not a showstopper in my opinion because you can always go with a good pair of Bluetooth headphones. Next, let's talk about system performance. This only has 4GB of RAM, so will this cause any issues? I know, crack the Chrome memory leak jokes. In terms of my requirements for this Chromebook, we're doing productivity work, so playing videos is probably as intense as I'll get in terms of processing power, and I'm happy to report that YouTube videos play pretty smoothly here. Next up, I did a code boot test and timed it. A code boot means that I powered off the Chromebook completely and then turned it back on for a fresh start. It took 11 seconds to get to the logon screen. Then after entering my password, it takes an additional four seconds to load the desktop. I was pleasantly surprised because this only has four gigs of RAM and this is probably due to the fact that Chrome OS is pretty lightweight and efficient. While you can't download Microsoft Word and Excel as apps by themselves, you can download Office 365. However, I can't really demo this since I don't have a subscription. I'm a big fan of OneNote, and OneNote can be installed separately, although you'll get a message saying that the app is no longer supported by Microsoft. That's unfortunate since I'll probably have to now stick with the web UI version. While we're on the subject of apps, in terms of bloatware, I don't see any issues here. Most of the preloaded apps are from Google. There's one from Adobe and there's one from HP. 
If you're familiar with the snap feature of Windows, which is personally one of my favorite features of Windows in general, Chrome OS also has a similar window management feature that allows you to do side-by-side -side comparisons pretty quickly and efficiently. Online, there are some people reporting that Chrome was causing some system performance issues when you have multiple tabs open. Now, this is understandable if you have an obscene amount of tabs open, but the one person was saying that they only had five tabs open and the system was kind of grinding to a halt to the point where it's unusable. Now, for me, five is not unreasonable because on my phone, I probably have 30 plus at any one time. So I decided to do a test on this Chromebook and at five tabs, no problems there. But once I hit uh, 10 tabs of rental sites that I loaded, I started to notice a little bit of a slowdown on the initial page load. And then after that, things sped back up. And then at around 18 tabs to 20 tabs, that's when I noticed some significant system performance degradation. Things were slowing down a lot, possibly speeding up a little bit more, but then things kind of bogged down again. So I think that's kind of the limit for the uh, Chromebook here. In my opinion, having that 18 to 20 soft limit of tabs in Chrome isn't a showstopper, although I do wish that that limit was actually higher. The keyboard has a little bit of texture and the letters are slightly raised. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but no complaints there. The keys don't light up, but I wasn't looking for a backlit keyboard to begin with. And then also, I did notice that there are some different keys compared to a quote-unquote normal keyboard. If you've never used a Chromebook keyboard before, there are some dedicated keys that you don't normally see. For example, along the top, you have the back, reload, full screen, and a dedicated key to show all your windows along with any other virtual desks if you choose to use that feature. The touchpad here is pretty nice. It's centered, nice and wide, no complaints there. It allows you to click by pressing all the way in for an actual click. Or if you want to just tap it to click, that's also fine, it'll accept both ways. It also recognizes multiple finger gestures, so you can do the two finger scroll to go up and down, right and left, or you can also do a three finger swipe to go between tabs within Chrome. Let's talk about offline access. If I'm on a plane or if I'm in an area with spotty internet connection, I want to be able to access my documents offline. There is a make available offline feature that you can use. And once you're connected to the web, the file will sync right away after you make your changes. So that's pretty nice. This is similar to Dropbox cloud storage if you have used that before. So it is pretty nice. You can manually download files, but you'll have a different experience there. Out of the box, you do get the Google Docs offline extension that gives you the ability to do some basic edits to documents, but with presentations, if you have complex graphics, they may not actually show up properly. Next up, let's jump into security. For data encryption at rest, that is enabled by default from what I've read, so that's great. I did run across a behavior that I didn't expect, but this wasn't that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. When I close my lid and I open it again, it doesn't lock the screen. And I found out that there's a setting for that. It's called lock when sleeping or lid is closed. This defaults to off and all you have to do is flip it to on. There is a built-in webcam privacy screen, so you can opt in to use that instead of taping over the camera. All right, let's give this built-in camera and microphone a test. So all the stuff that you're seeing and hearing is from the Chromebook itself. I'm currently obviously in the studio, so lighting-wise, we're getting plenty of it. So it shouldn't be struggling other than if I were to tilt this up, um, you can see there's a little bit of flaring going on. It's a 720p camera. Obviously, it's not going to be a professional mirrorless camera that um, you're seeing through. But if a sun is coming through the window behind you, this is kind of maybe simulating that where you might see some flaring. Now, on the other part of the studio, it is a little bit dark. So I'm going to show you what it looks like by walking over. As you can see, things get dark pretty quick. And it does get a little bit grainy, but you can still make out the main features of my face. So this is what it looks like in a dimmer uh, lit environment. And if I go back to the studio, this is obviously brighter and it takes some time for the camera to kind of catch up on that. But here it is. There's the built-in camera and microphone test for the HP Chromebook. 
let's talk about the battery. The battery is rated for 12 hours, but of course that depends on what you're doing. So for a quick test, I played YouTube videos at 75% brightness for the screen and 75% volume for the speaker. I figured YouTube videos were probably a medium load on the system and after 9 hours I went from 100% battery down to 3% and the OS estimated that there were about 18 minutes left although again this was just an estimate. To charge the battery from 3% to 100% it took between an hour and a half and 2 hours. In terms of weight and portability this is a very small and lightweight Chromebook so it is very easy to be mobile with it. And before we wrap up, I do want to talk about one other thing really quickly, and that is cloud dependency. I touched on this a little bit when I was talking about the offline access mode, which is very nice. But during the initial setup, it is expected that you have a Google account to log into. So unlike Windows, you can't set up a system without the internet. There is a cloud dependency over there for the initial setup. Beyond that initial setup, you do have an option for offline access, but I wanted to make a quick note there just in case you're wondering about that. Overall, I believe this is a good Chromebook if you're doing some basic productivity work. As long as the two issues that I mentioned doesn't bother you too much where the screen quality isn't that good and can cause potential eye strain and also the performance issues when you have too many Chrome tabs open. If those two issues don't bother you, then I say, yeah, go for it. The value is there for this Chromebook. But if they do bother you, then I say maybe steer away from this and look at something else. Overall, if I had to score this, I would give this a 3 out of 5 stars um, just because the value is there. But again, those two issues can bother some people depending on the type of user that you are. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next video.